Hi guys. The majority of horses end up being weaker through the right hind. Is there a correlation? Yeah, but now you're going to make me sound really thick. <laughs> <laughs> Each pot. That's it. Hi guys, so we have arrived to Hartbury to the National Convention. It's actually pretty good weather and it looks quite nice. We're about to go in, we're a bit late. So here's the entrance to International Arena of Hartbury. It's quite big, a lot of people, super excited. So we basically want to see that the horse is able to collect and carry the canter enough to make a transition back to the walk. But what's most important for the flying change is the canter on. So the first thing I like to do is in the counter canter there, check that the inside placement of the inside hind leg can be consistent and not crooked. Because if it's crooked, then we're going to have a bit of trouble getting the change to the new side. Okay? We need to be in the middle because then we're as close to the left or the right as possible. And then the last thing to straighten up is the horse's front end. So what we will do to introduce the flying change is we're going to do it on a much tighter line so that the horse stays together and we're going to encourage the canter and the straightness and, and sort of wait for the horse to almost be itching to change legs. I'm going to introduce the one ten, ten piece. We do pairs. So we're going to go down the wall and we're going to do a change to the outside and change to the inside. We'll wait and then we'll do a second one. Good. 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 Uh, hi again, guys. So we've just saw a couple of demonstrations by uh, Garrett Hilg and Michael Ulberg about how to uh, train young horses. And initially, why we decided to come here is because at the moment we have a couple of young horses in training, as you know. Um, and uh, some of them that are about to be settled this year and we decided to come and enrich our knowledge about how to teach, teach them stuff new stuff exciting stuff for example it was very interesting how michael was explaining about introducing a flying change and uh, you, you're going to see this further on or you've already seen that but it was very very interesting so we're gonna go now for a second session after the lunch break uh, and see what we're gonna learn there. So here, as you can see, I was wandering around the shopping area and then during the lunch break we also had a couple of talks about a rider's fitness and balance. Um, so you can see me trying to do something. I don't really know what I was supposed to do, but clearly Sasha is doing better than me. The first movement that I want to work with is just the concept of, it's a little bit of a figure that I've worked with now for a while and I found it really beneficial. It starts off the concept of the horse taking the weight back and turning with the quarters in. Let's, let's have a little play with this. What I want you to do is you can start off in whatever canter you want. So I want you to come in here, so you come on the quarter line in your canter and I want you to collect the canter and make him come back to walk here, okay? And then I want you to ride him round here and walk. And then when you get on this side, I want you to try and pick up the canter and do this half and then take him out. So walk around the first half, get him active because you've got no better canter. And then pick up the canter in that space. Good, and take him out. Shoulder four, on the way out, that's it. Good. A little bit of fluency. So think a lot about being very consistent in the line. And just say to him, just touch each pole. That's it, touch each pole with the shoulders and keep cantering. And shoulder four, super. I am actually very, very cold, so. Ninety-two percent of humans are weak through the right side. The majority of horses end up being weaker through the right hind. Is there a correlation? 
if the horse is weak right hind and the human is weak right hind, the two will always clash. So the idea of getting the human to sit to the right seat bone, that looked a lot better from, uh, from Greg there. He could sit to that right seat bone and start to facilitate the movement of that right hind. So we're working very closely with some, with some veterinarians and looking at how injury occurs more in the right hind than the left hind in dressage horses. We're doing this work in America. And when we have that correlation between 92% of humans weak right, and they think up to 70% of horses weak right, then there is a link between the two things. What we did to Greg there, I just switched his right side on. I put this hip opener on. What this does is to open the hips up, particularly in a male rider, to allow them to sit deeper. And the research we've done, putting this on, shows greater surface area in contact with the saddle. And here we can see Michael uh, training uh, a PF uh, with double lunge. It's quite a hot horse, so uh, he doesn't really accept the rider on top yet. So it's a great way to start off teaching PF like that. A little bit more down behind, quicker behind, better. That's much better changeover. Good. And then try and get that last change in on a straight line. Don't ride that last change into the turn. That's it. Ride this now in a straight line, as if you're going to go through the judge sitting at sea. Good. Much more. That's it. To the right. Make a weight and change. Good. Shoulder forward left. Make a weight and change. Za. And shoulder forward. Make a weight and change. Yeah. It's much better. Uh, so the first day has come to an end. We are slightly tired, to be honest. It's a lot of information, a lot of things to process, kind of. And I want to get get back to the hotel and get a pen and a paper and write down some insights that I've got today from, from this uh, demonstrations. Yeah, let's see what tomorrow holds for us. Hi guys, this is day two <laughs> and um, we are almost there, we are late, I'm trying to go very fast, Sasha doesn't let me, but yeah, they made us park very far away, uh, so it was quite a walk, but we are here, let's go. So how do you uh, remember your letters in the arena? Yeah, but now you're going to make me sound really thick. <laughs> <laughs> We don't necessarily really remember where the letters are because we learn a lot by patterns. So, my middle letters, I know that the D's at the top, X is there and G is there. Where we all seem to get lost is I and L. So I always remember it spells Sir. So that's how I remember why. So, See, there's a lot of oohs going on there, Gareth. People are loving this. This is gold. So, so yeah, I haven't done the long side yet. I know, I've got this to come. It's very exciting. <laughs> I don't have to remember this side because I remember what's opposite that side. So I start off with F, I know that's in the corner, and then F turns to P. I just sort of just do a half turn and it turns to P. Alright. And then I do a second one and it turns to B. Right. And then I take a bit off and it turns to R. <laughs> and thank you. <laughs> I would just not be myself if I didn't come back from an equine event with some shopping, obviously. So of course we went for the true horses color pad and bandages and we're probably gonna send it off to have our little logo here. I think it's gonna look beautiful. You know, like with her basic canter, every time she got tired, she cantered even bigger. When we started to do the changes, she cantered even bigger. And so the size of her canter starts to slightly work against what we were trying to achieve. So when we're talking about improving the paces, we're not always talking about improving them by making them bigger. What keeps the horse together is your ability to ride transitions, forward and back, forward and back, forward and back. But don't confuse forward and back with faster and slower or bigger. 
You know, just, just because you go forward, we might want them just to go more forward within the positioning, within the connection. Yeah? Good. And now we're going to try. Good. And set. And I want you to walk again. Keep your left leg. Walk. Good. And try. So in the canter, it's exactly the same thing. As soon as your horse thinks forward, start developing the collection. So once your horse is back, once your horse is in, we're talking more like five, six years old, then I find that lunging is really good for them. It's really good to improve contact, it's really good to improve strength, suppleness, all of, all of the ways, way of going things. And then you can complicate it a little bit with exercises that I'm going to do with some trucking poles and race poles um, to help the development. Good. So I want him to just start taking up the lunge line. So don't know if you notice, I'm not walking around after him. I see a lot of people on the lunge walking around after their horse. I try to keep my feet nicely on the centre line and let him know that he has to orientate around me. The poles encourage more engagement. So we see him a little bit more struggling to keep softness with the engagement. And again, this is where like the benefit of doing the poles is, is I'm gaining throughness. Good boy. I'm gaining throughness with the poles. Extra throughness. It gets the <laughs> demolition derby here. Yeah. Lovely. And you can see already, can't you, that as he goes through the poles, he, he takes a little bit more time, he picks himself a little bit more off the forehand, without him doing anything. Yeah? The poles do it for her. Good, and back. So we've just finished the two-day British National Convention dressage convention it was amazing honestly i would say that the first day was a little bit more informative and interesting uh, for me as it was about uh, higher step uh, higher stages of uh, horses development however today there were also uh, some interesting insights for example loads of new insights for me about pole work uh, pole work was double lunging like this kind of things that we showed you i'm definitely gonna uh, implement into my um riding and training yeah and uh, also some in the morning garrett was talking about walk um and um, different stages of it and how it's prob should be probably written so there are quite some uh some some points that i would take out from these days and really well organized by british dressage thank you very much thank you very much for watching guys um let us know whether you uh like to attend this kind of events uh that uh, you know uh broaden your uh knowledge in in uh, equestrianism and if you do what did you this year or planning to attend soon we would be very interesting to know thank you so much please like our video and subscribe to our channel bye bye